Last time on Improv Tabletop, we met our new trio, uh, quattro? Yeah. Qua- qua- quartet. <laughs> our new bunch. Yes, there are three people, but technically four characters <laughs> in the vast reaches of space. We have Captain Seymour Butts, the leader of the Starship Swamper Prize. We didn't actually give it a name. <laughs> the SS Swamp. The SS Swamp. Yeah, what are you doing in my swamp? Which stands for Swamp, Swamp, Swamp. Ah, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <that's- laughs> Captain Seymour Butts is there. He's the captain. He took over from Shrek after Shrek died in space. <laughs> you know. We also have William Katner and Leonard Cattoy, who are two versions of the same person from a transporter accident. One of them's the gunner, one of them's the pilot. We also have Officer Charming, formerly Prince Charming of Far, Far Away, who has found himself demoted to being just a mechanic down below the decks. We discovered that he was in the middle of trying to save the ship from blowing up uh, after an oxygen leak happened, after they hit an asteroid, that Leonard Cattoy was supposed to shoot with the laser, but he was asleep. Eh, what are you going to do? Cats, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> but they finally managed to fix that at the expense of one of the three little pigs. But after they got that fixed, they decided to warp drive to the nearest large object that they thought might be a planet, but it wasn't a planet. It was a Borg cube. And they got an incoming message from Lord Farquaad, who has been assimilated by the Borg. What's going to happen? Happen? Let's find out here in the world of Star Shrek. What's shaking, everybody? You're listening to Improv Tabletop, the Fate RPG actual play where we make up everything on the spot. I'm Ned Wilcock, your host and GM, and today I'm joined by Christian Randall, Captain Connor Wood, a cat and a cat, Justin Porter, aka JP, and I'm just an android trying to be human, <laughs> which funny thing about that uh, android uh, data has a cat, which I just thought of when your character is a cat. Oh, that does have a cat. It's perfect. Yeah. He should have two. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have just received an incoming message from Lord Farquaad. How could he be here? He uh, looks at you all with his metallically marred Borg face and says, I bet you're all wondering how I could be here. Surely I am rotting away in the belly of a dragon. Is that not how it all went down? Ha ha, you puny fools, thinking that a dragon's belly was sufficient enough a prison for my magnitude. Your magnitude is small, and you are clearly not yourself anymore. So we will be kicking your butt soundly. (laughs) Ha, I would like to see you try. You see, resistance is futile is the problem for you (laughs) because I have been assimilated into a higher cause, the cause of the Borg. And you too shall be assimilated. I, it would be really cool if you just were like, hey, let's all assimilate. Because, like I said, resistance is in fact futile. Mm. All right. Yes, and. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> That's a great idea. Let's assimilate. Come on, guys. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, Borg Farquad. You are futile. Wait. I... Um, it's getting kind of uh, chilly in here. Does anybody have an extra shirt? <laughs> <laughs> um, I will go ahead and reach into my little compartment and toss you a shirt. It is sized for me. It's probably going to fit on your bicep. <laughs> Question. Color. Color of shirt. Color of shirt. You know what? I'm giving you a blue shirt. Ooh. Nice. Blue shirt. Okay. That's like that's like armor. <laughs> you basically just got some armor. I give you plot armor. Yeah. <laughs> I put it I put it on my head, you know, as a hat. Cool, man. All right, Lord Farquad. What? Are you doing in my sector? (laughs) You tell him, Captain. Well, you see, I get so bored out here in space, destroying system after system, blowing them up from above. Surely you wondered what is that great glowing light in the sky before the entire place went (gasps) kablooey. I did wonder that. Oh, I know the answer to this one. That's the sun. Huh, gotcha. (laughs) (laughs) Ah. You are Prince Charming. I remember hearing about you from the next kingdom over. Ah, uh, yes, you were you were kind of a big deal back in the day, weren't you? But oh, how the turntables. <laughs> yeah, well, now he's a blue shirt, so the table hasn't turned that much. It matches my eyes. <laughs> How does it feel to be down in the gutters when you used to be on top of the world? Um... Actually, it feels pretty good. Uh, I've been working out. (laughs) He's been keeping a healthy mindset. 
We've been making a sure of that. I won't have you talking to McCree that way, Lord Farquaad. Hey, look, you, you just be quiet, Captain Butts, for just a moment. Officer Charming. Officer Charming, you could work out on my ship. We could implant you with all kind of mechanical mechanisms that would make your muscles even more swole and attractive for the ladies. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Gadzooks! He's charming, charming! <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think I'll stay on this swamp ship. Hmm, well, I suppose I can have my cake and eat it too in this case. Engage the tractor beams! <gasps> he calls out behind him, and you see an executioner in a hood step out from <laughs> behind his chair oh, no. and say, Which lever do I pull? Do I pull number three, my lord? <laughs> and Lord Farquaad says, It's lever number one. It's the big lever. That's the first lever that you should always pull if there's a question. And he pulls the first lever, and you hear the two little pigs say, It's a tractor beam, Captain! Oh, oh, might no. I make a suggestion? And we go to Red Alert. Red Alert! The bridge is calling for a Red Alert! Katner! Reversers at full power! Aye, Captain! And I paw the reversers, designating all power to reversers! We gotta- Give it more! Oh, dang! Our drive is busted! Oh! Oh, oh no! Oh, no! Uh, we need more crystals to do that! Now, Leonard Cattoy, you have reached the turrets by this point. Yes! Okay! Uh, time to do what I, uh, time to mew what I mew best. <laughs> mew, 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 mew. And that's the <laughs> sound the gun makes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's have you roll to attack with, uh, I could see it being clever. I could also see it being quick. Just try and blast them before. I'd like, to, I'd like it to be quick uh, because I'd like to believe that he fired maybe a little before the command was given. <laughs> oh, cool. Let's go, let's go with that then. All right. So, uh, ooh, ooh, grand total is plus two. Ooh. Right, not ideal. Yeah, I'm going to have the Borg cube defend with forceful. <laughs> Also a plus two. <gasps> so on a tie to attack, you don't harm the target, but you do gain a boost. Alrighty. And the boost I'm going to give you is the element of surprise. Ha <laughs> Yeah. Cool. And you hear Lord Farquaad say on the other side, what is this? You attack our glorious ship? Well, perhaps we should just respond in kind. He turns to the executioner and says, four torpedoes fire. And the executioner says, is that lever number three, my lord? <laughs> and he says, it's lever number two. And so uh, I'm going to roll clever for the executioner to see if he pulls the right lever. Now these boards got to assimilate that guy a little better. <laughs> That's a minus two. Ah! He reaches out and he pulls the first lever and the tractor beam deactivates. <laughs> no thoughts, head empty. All right, here's our chance. Helmsman Katner, get us to a safe place where we can go and... Mine some crystals. We've got to report this to Starfleet. Meow, meow, Captain. And I don't know. Am I doing something? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to try and just <laughs> meow, 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 meow. <laughs> yeah. Roll to overcome with quick. With quick. Okay. Got to go fast. Got to go fast. Uh, all right. Uh, plus three. Plus three. Ooh. Yeah. You spin the wheel and start flying off in the direction of a conveniently nearby planet. Whee! And you hear Lord Farquaad over the comms saying, oh, they're, they're getting away, quick, turn on the aft thrusters. And he's like, is that lever number three, my lord? <laughs> and you hear their bickering fade off as you start flying off towards the planet. Yeah, those guys are a huge, huge threat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, captain, my captain, I will um get the transporter room ready so that we can have a landing party go down there. That's a good lad. Mice, give me a scan of the planet. They all take their visors and put them on a little bit tighter and they just like stick their heads together and they're like scanning, scanning, scanning. <laughs> I'm sure that's how it works. They go off a smell. Mm -hmm. They go off a space smell. <laughs> and one of them turns back towards the captain and says, we've discovered a great wealth of bendesium crystals down there. Bendi was that bendesium? Is that what it is? Uh, no, dilithium. dilithium. Dil we found a great resource of dilithium crystals. Bendesium's from Deep Rock Galactic, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's from Metroid. That's, okay, whatever. There's, t there's a lot of minerals down on this planet, Captain. Yeah. And you hear the door to the cargo bay open up and the seven dwarves start stepping out and they just go, rock and stone, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, if you haven't played Deep Rock Galactic, it is quite a fun game. Yeah, play it. Okay. 
Hopefully there's some intelligent life down there to help us. Uh, I'm going to roll to see if there's intelligent life down there to help you. Oh, no. There appears to be signs of intelligent life down there, <laughs> Captain. All right, remember the prime destructive. We can't interfere too much in other people's swamps. <laughs> All right, I get onto the, the transporter pad, and I, um, the wolf that's dressed up like the grandma's by the table to set us down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, you give the word, Captain. All right, uh, you sure you're going to go out in that? Am, am I not wearing the right thing? Do I look? Should I wear my lifts? I'm just worried about people not respecting me. I was more thinking that maybe you should put on some pants. Your loincloth is very cool, Captain, but it's not very professional. I uh, I go and I put on short pants, so they, they come up just below my knee. Cool. We're still getting the whole calf on display. Oh, yeah. <laughs> full calf on display. All foot of it. <laughs> and I do slip on some, some lifts. All right. And the big bad wolf pushes the button and sits back with a copy of a Space Vogue <laughs> and is just kind of flipping through it, just kicks back. And the teleporter begins whining, swirling, James, twinkle, twinkle, twinkle. <laughs> and you are down on the surface. Cool. I, I look around. What are we looking at? Yeah. You look around and you see grand colors all about you. Giant flowers, big, wonderful trees, pumpkins shaped like carriages. You find yourself in a surprisingly fairy tale esque sort of planet. <gasps> this place is oddly Terran. <laughs> well, time to tear it up! Rock and stone! <laughs> and you see the dwarves just start smashing apart one of the pumpkins looking for crystals. Oh my gosh! The seven dwarves, but they're deep rock dwarves! <laughs> Don't worry, Captain, I bought a tricorder, and I get out my tricorder, and I start scanning everything. Okay. Seems to be a, a Class M planet. Yeah. Over the course of the next couple minutes, there's going to be significantly less everything, because these dwarves are just... <laughs> I just I give them the reminder, don't dig straight down. Right, right, right. But other than that, they should be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great advice. All right, what am I rolling? Yeah, Officer Charming, roll to overcome with Clever. I got a plus one. All right, yeah. You're scanning around, and you are able to find a vein of dilithium crystals not too far from where you are. And you also get, like, a slight ping of intelligent life further off in the forest. Oh, Captain, we have intelligent life going that way further off in the forest and dilithium going this way. All right, dwarves. You heard him. Dig. We are going to go check out the locals. Rock and stone. <laughs> and they just start <laughs> down, 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 down. <laughs> digging straight down beneath themselves. <laughs> Listening to your advice, not at all. <laughs> all right, so the four of us, Captain Butts, Officer Charming, and William and Leonard, uh, will head off in the direction of where the life was detected. Okay. All right, now I'm going to roll to see if maybe something interesting happens to you. <laughs> Random encounter, maybe? Bum, bum. All right, you are walking along, climbing up over trees, pushing aside leaves and whatnot, and off in the distance, you start to see a structure looming ahead of you. <gasps> Is it looming to everyone or just to me? Mostly to you, <laughs> uh, but it appears to be roughly cottage-sized. Oh. All right. Onward, friends. Everyone, activate sneak. Okay, activating. Okay, I go from all twos to, to all fours. <laughs> meow, 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 meow. I remove my lifts. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Stealth mode engage. I, I'm bad at this, and I spray Axe body spray on myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Everybody, roll to overcome with sneaky. I'm looking at our sheets, and that's pretty bad for us. Yeah. Yes. Everybody is not great sneaky. I was going to say, mine's, mine's a plus zero. That's where the Axe comes in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sick. I got a plus one altogether, so we. I got a plus one. <laughs> I actually got a plus two. Hey, Ooh, all right. that axe is effective. <laughs> I'm going to roll with Clever for something out in the woods. Ah! All right. You guys are sneaking along. Sneak, sneak, sneak. You peer over a log so you can get a better look at the structure, and it appears to be a cottage made of gingerbread. Mmm. Well. Yummy. It's not my trouble, but it is my uh, stunt. <laughs> So I, I start to lift off the ground and float through the air as the smell of it starts pulling me closer. Ah, yes. Mm. Oh, no, Captain. Think of the empty calories. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And as you leave your area where you are hidden, you hear a whizzing noise. Ah! Let's have you roll to defend with Clever to see if you can dodge this attack. I'm going to see this coming. 
That's a plus four. Oh, oh. yeah. Also a plus four. Oh. Dang. <laughs> yeah, so out of the corner of your eye, you see this projectile whizzing towards you. You turn and you see it is a hard peppermint candy whizzing towards you. You are able to block it away at just the last moment. Can I eat it? Sure. <laughs> nice. It is very tasty. Uh, and you hear a voice shouting from the woods. You will not take us. We will not be assimilated. Resistance is not futile. We're not here to assimilate, friends. We're here to dig up some of your minerals and be on our way. We'd just like to pay you for the for the trouble. Wait a second. I would recognize that horrible accent anywhere. <laughs> and <laughs> from one of the trees, you hear a scampering noise as Gingy <gasps> falls down Gingy. into the clearing. Does he have all of his buttons? He does not have all of his buttons. <gasps> not the gumdrop button. Gingy, my friend, what happened? Lord Farquaad showed up out of nowhere. I thought he was dead. I thought we had him taken care of, but turns out we were wrong. He kidnapped all of us. He brought us here. Oh, we're Shrek. Shrek can save us. I take off my hat, which does make me a little taller, and I hold it over my heart, and I just bow my head and give it a shake. Shrek is dead in space, Leonard says. <laughs> and Gingy glances over towards the cottage and says, Fiona's not going to be happy about that. I, I stand up a little taller. Fiona's here. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, let's get that widow. <laughs> hey, she's available. And Gingy says, yeah, she's in the cottage with all the other people who got kidnapped. She's not very happy. None of us are very happy. Oh, Lord Farquaad, he took my gumdrop buttons and he kept them on his giant board cube. That no good. He's no rank and file of the short king code. He's a disgrace. I'm going to walk up to the door and give it a very polite knock. All right. Roll with Flashy to see how polite your knock is. <laughs> That's a plus two. Oh, nice. All right. The door creaks open. You see Fiona is there and she looks down and sees, well, she looks forward and sees nobody and then looks down <laughs> and sees you. And she says, Captain Butts, how did you make it here without getting assimilated by the Borg? Is she Ogre Fiona or Human Fiona? I'm going to roll to see whether she is Ogre Fiona or Human Fiona. She is Human Fiona. Uh, I hide the disappointment on my face a little bit, but then I, <laughs> I, I keep going. Aye, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Princess, we have the ship, but we've been damaged. And I'm sorry to say, Farquaad's not far behind us. She looks up at the sky and narrows her eyes and says, This is what I've been worried about. And she rushes back inside and she pulls out a big old blaster gun, like shotgun style, and says, We've been arming ourselves up here, waiting for the time when we would have to defend ourselves against Lord Farquaad's advances. Well, if I may, I think I've come up with a plan that may be a way to defeat the Borg. If you're willing to listen, princess. Oh, perfect. Yeah, come inside. Come inside. Let's talk about this plan. I'll gesture for the others to follow inside so we can all sit around the round cookie table. Sick. I get comfy in Fiona's lap. Both of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. How are you just a cat or are you human sized? I am a cat. I'm not a doctor's. <laughs> okay. I, I, no, I'm cat sized. Okay. Like we're about the same height. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm like Puss in Boots height. Ah. That's uh, that's where I'm at. Honestly, I love this. It's you and me and all the dwarves and then Charming who's standing like <laughs> normal, twice as high as any He's of the a normal height just towering above us. I, I look up at the roof and see, is there anything I could start doing pull-ups? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you look up and you see that there is a whole bunch of like, they've set up racks of just tons and tons of weapons here mm -hmm. of all ranges from like primitive sort of stone lashed to the end of a spear all the way up to just like this glowing sort of cube that they've got at the other end of the rack. And so you're just like, oh, okay. And just like toss a bunch of weapons onto the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and roll to overcome with forceful. Okay. Two. Yeah, you managed to get two nice pull-ups out of this. <laughs> yeah. And then I look to see if Fiona's looking. <laughs> Fiona is, in fact, she, like, turns further inside of the cottage and says, uh, Donkey, could you please get some waffles for our friends? And you hear a voice say, oh, I love it. I love making waffles. <laughs> and uh, you hear a replicator buzzing in the other room as he starts replicating some waffles. 
but Fiona sits down at a table in the center of the room and says, all right, what's our plan? So we know that the Borgs integrate whatever they find and put it part of their bodies and part of their culture. What if instead of attacking them with our best weapons and our strongest soldiers, we do the opposite, oh. turn them weak we. by making them assimilate a bunch of soft gingerbread. <laughs> Idiots. That's how we survived last time. <laughs> the executioner hooded man was very, very unintelligent. So we got away. We need to add idiots to his army, B but we could only do evil deserving idiots. Mm. I, I look over at Charming and then yeah. and then shake my head. <laughs> I mean, he's our, he's our last resort trump card. If we really need to mix things up, we can throw him in there. But <laughs> I like him on our side. <laughs> and Fiona says, well, unfortunately, there's not too many of us here right now. There's me, there's Donkey. We've got uh, King Arthur over in the other room and we've got the dragon. Ooh. Uh, well, we need that. You do have a replicator, don't you? And you hear the door slam open and Donkey says, do we ever have a replicator? <laughs> and he's got a big old tray full of waffles on his back and he slides it onto the table in front of you. And I go ahead and I stick my finger in the syrup and I lick it and I nod. It's never as good as the real thing. <laughs> Gingy, could we make some low-grade copies to throw at the enemy? You mean bake idiot gingerbread? Like half-baked gingerbread men? <laughs> And then just let him go be Borgs? What's the ethics behind this? <laughs> so we're just making like a whole bunch of clones of me and then sending them off to the slaughter? <laughs> this is what they were made for. They'll love it. <laughs> no, I, I think this is a... I don't know how I feel about this plan. Being part clone myself. <laughs> well, it's just a rough idea. I do agree that I don't think we should be sending perhaps live people to be assimilated, but... Maybe make them take the weaker weapons. Yeah. Do cookies have rights? <laughs> <laughs> and Donkey says, we'll find out. And he just grabs Gingy ah! and brings him to the other room. And Gingy's like, wait, what are you doing? Ah! And you hear replicator noises <laughs> coming from the other room. <laughs> Maybe he won't make them sentient. Now the question, do they have souls? <laughs> Will we be held accountable for this? When at last we stand before our final pearly gates. And the door opens and there's like mist coming out from behind it. And you see emerging from the mist, moving very robotically, uh, a single gingerbread man that looks up at all of you and says, Hello, world. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, world. <laughs> robot cookie. Robot cookie. R robot bot cookie cookie I say in unison almost <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little out of unison a little out of yeah and Gingy the real Gingy steps up next to it and says this is a little bit disconcerting but uh, I guess we can go with it <laughs> um captain may I make a suggestion you may what if we got the magic mirror to help us with uh finding out what the weakness of the Borg is I haven't seen the magic mirror since the destruction far, far away. The magic mirror is taboo technology. I look over to Princess Fiona. Do you have any word as to where it might be? The last thing I heard from Shrek before he disappeared, before he managed to take off with you, before I was torn from his grip by the terrible tractor beam of the Borg cube, the last thing he told me was that he was stowing it away somewhere on your ship where it would be safe. Mm. I go ahead and I grab my communicator and I flip it open because the coolest communicators flip open. Mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> they last a lot longer too. Yeah, <laughs> they do. More durable. And I go ahead and I activate it and I say, Captain Butts to Big Bad Grandma. <laughs> what a sentence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you get a response from the other side. Hey, uh, what's going on down there? Go ahead and detect all life forms at our location. Beam us up. We've got some hunting to do. All right. You feel the as you are all teleported back up to the SSS swamp. All right. We're here to do searching. You keep an eye on those dwarves down there. Any sign of trouble, beam them back up to us. <laughs> and the big bubble says, oh, yeah, I've been watching. Three of them are already dead. <laughs> They tend to get out of control. I give him a sharp salute and I just nod <laughs> to be expected. That's about right. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Fiona looks around the ship, the the bridge of which is her old home. And she's like, oh, so many memories of this place. That seat over there was where I once toddled my children upon my knee. Oh, 
I still don't know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot they had kids. <laughs> they are currently training for Starfleet, yep. I think. That's good. I'm very glad that it's not something more sinister. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not. Oh, I wish I knew where the mirror was, and I'm usually, I know where most all the mirrors are on this ship, but I don't know where the magic one is. And Fiona's just like, hmm, yep, yep, that's not surprising. <laughs> and she just, like, turns away from you, just whisks off. Uh, she's like, I'm gonna go into the hollow deck. It's been really rough down there on that planet. I need some time to just chill out for a bit. Um, as she leaves, I would like to activate Hungry Like the Wharf, because I now have a goal, and that goal is to find the mirror and I want to start sniffing it out. I'm hungry for some mirror. I'm hungry for some. I, I like I said when I when I chose this thing, it's more about choosing a path and getting voraciously all about it. So cool. <laughs> yum yum yum. Tempered glass. I'm just gonna chomp down on some nice shards of broken glass. So ah! baby. Yep. So I go I go into my quarters and I grab the mirror off my wall and I start chewing on it to get a flavor and then I start I start the hunt. All right. You're in your quarters for a moment and you look and you see that recorder that Shrek left behind his final recording on and flashback doo -loo 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 -loo. to back before you were the captain. You are the second in command here on the SSS Swamp and Shrek has kind of pulled you aside after a stressful day of just trying to survive out in space. He tips his head and pours some stuff out of his ear into a glass and starts <laughs> sipping on it. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> and he just says, Officer Butts, what are we doing out here? The very best we can, Captain. But what's it accomplishing, Butts? I mean, we've just been out here wandering for what feels like years, but could be weeks. I don't know because I haven't been keeping track. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a little calendar in my pocket that I've been like ticking things off to keep track of it for him. <laughs> well... Captain Shrek, we're doing everything we can to find those lost fairy tale creatures, to rectify the horrors wrought by those Borgs and other such ne'er do wells out in the galaxy. We're doing the good work. And you really think they're still out there? After all this indeterminate amount of time we've spent searching and not discovering them, you really think they're still out there? And I tap the side of my nose. I can smell them. I know they're out there. You Romulans did always have really good senses of smell. <laughs> <laughs> and as he's finishing up his drink, you hear the sirens blaring. An emergency has happened. And Shrek says, Oh, I guess it's time for me to go and take care of another problem out there. And that was the last day that you saw Captain Shrek. And you're brought back to the moment thinking about that last conversation you had with him. I swipe the recorder and I put it in my pocket so that I can maybe pass it on to Fiona if need be. But then I go ahead and I sit down and I reach into my own ear to pull out as much earwax as I can. I pull out the pickled eyeballs that are in the jar in, uh, in the nightstand. Yummy. I lay out this little thing and I'm like, I've got to put myself in the mindset of Captain Shrek. Where would he have hidden the mirror? And so I try and eat up, get into the mindset, belch, and then I blindfold myself and start just going pure instinct walking through the ship. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, has Captain Butts eaten any of these pickled eyes before this point? Never. That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably fermented at this point, too. They've been there for a while. A little drunk. <laughs> yeah, let's have you roll to overcome with forceful just to see how well you stomach these pickled eyes. <laughs> That's not bad. That's a plus three. Mm. All right. Yeah, you, Eyeballs. <laughs> you reach into the jar. You feel it's like it's like a peeled grape, you know, yeah. just floating in, <laughs> floating in vinegar. You pull it out. You kind of squish it between your fingers for just a little bit. Get a, get a sense of the texture, weirdly firm, but also <laughs> slightly giving. <laughs> stick it stick it right there between your incisors, and you're like, uh, is that? You stick it between your molars. Yeah. Stick it between <laughs> the molars on the other side, uh, and you feel the squeezing pop. <laughs> mm, yummy. <laughs> but you manage to stomach it without uh, too much issue, and you feel the Shrekness beginning <laughs> to flow through you. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. um, and I will begin belching my way through the corridors, trying to intuit where it could have been hidden. It's like a new four vac location. Uh -huh. <laughs> Belch location. I'm gonna I'm gonna run into you in the hallway and be like, Captain, have you finally lost it? <laughs> yes, I have. I've lost everything that was holding me back. I'm my truest self now. Okay. Is there any way I can assist you be your truest self? I need you to make a biscuits. I am quite good at the biscuits. Uh, yeah, I'm going to hop on his little head and just... <laughs> biscuit, 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 biscuit. biscuit. That's exactly what I need. All right. So since you are using Hungry Like the Wolf, let's have you roll with Clever to see if you can find the location of this mirror. But we're going to give you, uh, we'll say, two free invokes on that. You're guided by biscuits. <laughs> All right, baby. That's a plus five. Ooh, yeah. Dang. And wait, uh, remind me what an invoke does. It's been, it's been a while. Yeah, that is either a free plus two or a free reroll. Oh, well, then you know what? Reroll. No. <laughs> I am traditionally a reroll guy. Oh, it's... But people change. Yeah. People change. People learn <laughs> sometimes. So if that's two free invokes, I'll go ahead and yeah, I'll make it a plus nine. All right. That is a very good roll. So something uh, especially special is going to happen by the time you succeed. Your senses, you're just kind of bumping around through the corridors, belching every time you hit a wall. And eventually you get the feeling of, we have arrived. And you take off the blindfold and you see in front of you the glass door to the engine room with just a big pile of bacon sitting on the floor on the other side. Oh, um, no. As far as I oh. understand, they fixed the breach though, right? That was the last thing he did? Yeah, so the engine room should be safe now. And I mean, the doors, they've got the dilithium crystals. They're going to be uh, getting those loaded up soon. But you get the sense of somewhere in this engine room is where it is hidden. All right, I'll go ahead and I will summon down Officer Charming since he knows this area even better than me and we will begin looking through the engine room. Captain, do you think Crispy would mind? And I kind of gesture with my paw towards the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> what higher calling is there for a pig than to become bacon? And Charming, you flash back to the moment where you heard him say, the need so submit the out of the need so so few. Was fun. <laughs> I go and I and I, I get out a container, but then also like um, what's it, like the the tongs, and I start taking each of the bacon's and I put them into the the container. <laughs> I'm just gonna munch, munch, munch on some of them. I mean, we are gonna munch me and me and me and my other me. And I just take my tongs and just lightly tap you on the head. No, naughty. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and I take the I take the thing and I put it to the side and I start looking for the mirror. All right, yeah. With the captain's belch location assisting you along the way, you go to one of the back sort of corridors and there is a closet there that you have never opened because there's a sign on it that says do not open. Is there a big scary ogre on it? Like <laughs> on the sign to scare off people who are going to open it? Yeah. <laughs> Beware ogres here be. <laughs> um, I, I go and I guess, well, um, I'll, and I do like the Catholic like thing and I open and I open it. <laughs> Cross yourself. The crossing. <laughs> and on the other side of the door, just sitting here in this closet is the mirror <gasps> hanging up on the wall of the closet. Meow, meow. Officer Charming, you found it. Um, m uh, magic mirror. And and, oh, and, no, and I like I whisper you, again. You, magic mirror, are you are you there? You have to address it as such. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the most precious kitty of them all? <laughs> and you see, you see a swirling on the other side of the glass. And as the swirling begins to coalesce into the form of a face, you hear a voice on the other side saying, "Why." How could I choose between William Katner and Leonard Cat Toy? Okay, they got that. They got them big happy eyes, and they're just purring and like looking up at the mirror. And you see the ghostly visage, white, bleached white, like the mask that's usually in the mirror on the other side, but it is not the mask's face. You see the face of Captain Shrek appear what? on the other side of the mirror. Boom! Boom! Oh my! Goodness. Oh, uh, it's uh, about time you came and found me. Whoa. The door said, do not open. Because there were ogres on the other side. I'm the ogre on the other side. Oh, oh. that's what the sign was for. Oh, I don't get it. <laughs> Look, <laughs> Officer Charmy, just egg on our face. Trust us. Egg on all of our face. Humpty Dumpty all over the place. <laughs> Sorry, Shrek. But how did you get in the mirror? 
I'm still not entirely sure myself. I was floating out there in the darkness of space, trying to take care of that great catastrophe that took me away from you initially, feeling all of the air leaking out of my lungs, my eyes bulging out of their sockets, Ugh. trying to force themselves into the vacuum about me. Ugh. And the next thing I knew, there was a big old flash of light. I heard a twinkling sound. I found myself surrounded with sparkles. Oh. This sounds like a type of transport and accident. Oh, no. I get out my tricorder to, to scan it to see if that's what it was. Yeah, go ahead and roll to overcome with clever. Uh, plus three. Hey, oh, nice. Pretty good. Yeah, so there's definitely some technological aspect to it, but there's also a magical aspect to it. Ooh. The sparkles of the teleporter are definitely part of it, but the other sparkles that were involved, some kind of fairy magic, perhaps? Is this anything I would have recognized from my weird experience with the teleporter accident? Or is this, mm. does this not sound familiar? Let's have you roll to overcome with clever. Okay. Sha. Uh, that's plus two, clever, plus two. Okay, four, plus four. Yeah, so you start pulling this information together. Uh, Charming, you share your information with the rest of the group. Uh, oh, Captain, uh, it looks like that this is not just a transporter incident. This might also have some magical elements to this. Mm -hmm. And William Katner, you start to bring in your information. Like you read the readouts on the tricorder. And you think back to your experience that there was also kind of a different sort of sparkliness going on, but not like the golden bright sparkles, like a dark, sinister sparkling. Okay. Yeah, so there was some sort of like fairy magic intervening in both of these instances, but from different sources. When I became we, there was a similar sparkle. I think there's a third party at play. Prince Charming, you actually, now that I think about it, would be pretty familiar with this. The sparkles of a fairy godmother, perhaps? Oh, mommy. <laughs> No, that's Captain Shrek. What are you talking about? <laughs> sorry, sorry. I just got a, a whiff of my childhood and kind of a um, bad memories, too. I don't know. I don't know. My relationship with my mom wasn't very good. I don't know. Oh, PC, I'm sorry. Uh, was she kind of not great? She just expected so much of me. She was a hag. <laughs> I she probably has something to do with this then, huh? Uh, ghost, mirror, Shrek. With this information that has come to light, the deeds of the fairy godmother surely are at play, trying to ruin things for our friend William Katner over here, but a different force at play, saving me in the last moment from death out in the vacuum of space. Prince Charming, you don't happen to have like an ant or something, do you? Oh, oh, an ant? Oh, yes, we do have an ant. Um, ant Bibbidi Bobbidi. <gasps> ah, mm. <laughs> the great Bibbidi Bobbidi. Her deeds and misdeeds have been spread far and wide. Last time I checked, she was on a different planet. A good witch and a bad witch. Mm. Yes. I think I know where we need to set course for after this. It'll be a terrible journey, a difficult trial. But with our mighty crew together, I think we're headed to Oz. Oh, planet Oz. And I think that's where we're going to pick up next time. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. What? This has never happened before. Yeah, we are pushing some bounds here. I'm digging this. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's Wizard of Oz. It's kind of fairy tale. Oh, yeah, yeah. dude, it's right there. <laughs> yeah. It's right there. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're jumping planets. Absolutely. Like when Shrek 5 inevitably comes out, it's sure to be like a Wizard of Oz crossover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's the Avengers of fairy tales. Yep. <laughs> well, I am very excited to see what happens in the land of Oz. But for now, thanks everybody for listening to Improv Tabletop. We'll be back next week with more adventures in the world of Star Shrek. <laughs> if you want more, go and subscribe. Maybe even give us a review. We would be as happy as a pig who knows that his sacrifice is continuing to benefit the people around him. Mm. If you go ahead and give us a review on the podcatcher of your choice. We're also all over social media at Improv Tabletop. So if you'd like to connect with us there, you know, maybe you'd like to talk with Christian about his theories for the upcoming Shrek 5 film. <laughs> don't be afraid to reach out. Now it's time to shout out our next batch of Sticker Club patrons. Woo! This week we're shouting out Stuttering GM, Tetra Slash, and Thomas Ryan. Hey. Bum, bum. I know him. 
Yes, Thomas Ryan is the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in the future, whenever we refer to the fairy godmother, just know that in our hearts, we're talking about how much we want to take down Thomas Ryan instead. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> but Tetra Slash and Stuttering GM are two of the good fairies. Because like Glinda, the good witch is the Witch of the East, the Wicked Witch of the West. And then Tetra Slash and Stuttering GM are the fairies of the North and the South. Why not? That's sick. <laughs> good for good for them. Yeah, we don't hear about them as much because the North and the South, they're just doing all right. Like, Things are going well. No, no news is good news. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So continue taking care of your kingdoms. And Thomas Ryan, get ready for a beatdown. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have more Sticker Club patrons to shout out next week. And if you, dear listener, want to join their ranks, consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash improv tabletop, where you can also get things like Discord access, where you can send us character aspects that we definitely will ask for before we start recording. <laughs> uh, you can also get biannual sticker packs and more such as our current ongoing patron-exclusive campaign, Dumbledore's Delinquents. Yeah. JP, if you were to try and sell our listeners on Dumbledore's Delinquents, what is, like, the top thing they should be excited about? Um, I would say, uh, boy, we have royally messed up the first book. <laughs> <laughs> or one might say, improve yeah. the first book. Yeah, that, we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Vastly improved the first book in many significant ways. Yeah. And unchangeable ways. <laughs> In unchangeable ways. Let's just say uh, Malfoy looks a little different for the rest of his life. Yep. Yep. So yeah, if you want to get in on that, go check out our Patreon. Now, let's do a round of plugs. Christian, would you like to take that this week? Yeah, absolutely. So we have our sister podcast, I Cast Fireball, a 5e actual play, where they're going through the tyranny of dragons. And I believe by the time this comes out, they should basically have finished recording most of it yeah it's it's coming up on the end it's coming to the close here yeah we're we're <laughs> in the middle of time shenanigans as far as you know when this is going to release when those episodes are going to release it's it's close it's very close. <laughs> yeah so uh you may have just enough time to catch up or you may be able to binge the whole thing either way it'll be a blast um i would like to also plug how cute cats are guys <laughs> Guys, cats are just great. Oh, yeah. I think all of us have cats. Mm -hmm. I have a hundred in my yard right now. I will say, Connor has sent me some videos recently of the cat kingdom being built in his backyard. Oh, my. There are so many cats back there. It's beautiful. They're marvelous. I actually watched a video recently, and I sent it to Ems, and it said, like, uh, this guy talked about how if people don't like cats, that's a red flag. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because cats, like, dogs are awesome. I have a dog, too. But cats are the animal that you require consent. So it's like they will let you pet them, but you have to do it on their terms. If you don't like cats because of that, then you, it's a red flag. Exactly. <laughs> Ooh. Cats are cats are great. They're so cute. I just think everybody should give them a chance unless you're super allergic and then yes. admire them from afar. Yeah, cats are wonderful. In <laughs> fact, I'm probably going to take my cat for a walk right after this. Oh, good idea. In any case, thanks everybody for joining us here in the world of Star Shrek. I'm Ned Wilcock, your host in GM, and I've been joined by... Christian Randall, star explorer. Conrad Woodard has a lot of cats in his yard. <laughs> Justin Porter, a.k.a. JP, and live long and prosper. Yeah. Much love and stuff, everybody. Live long and prosper, everybody. We'll catch you next time on Improv Tabletop. Did you guys hear about the whole Shrek 5 kerfuffle that happened? Yeah, no. what a mess. I, I didn't hear that, no. So there was some intern at DreamWorks, like, I don't know all the details, but they mentioned something about Shrek 5, like, on their resume on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. and then DreamWorks made them pull it. Oh, snap. So they leaked it, basically. They yeah. were like, I did this, ha <laughs> uh. Well, <laughs> the state that movies are in, that doesn't necessarily mean it's coming, yeah. but... <laughs> DreamWorks is in a good spot. Uh, so Shrek 5, whenever that comes out. What if we just predicted the plot of Shrek 5? Yeah. <laughs> this whole, this, these four episodes are going to be the plot of Shrek 5. Yeah, bookmark this episode, guys. We're going to get a cease and desist from DreamWorks. <laughs> that we are. Bring it on. If we have to pull it, you know why. <laughs> <laughs>